so welcome back to the class on plm so today we'll be just uh, brushing out an important case study related to how to implement a new strategies to the existing product design process so that it helps in improving the entire life cycle of the product and also in improving the sales returns and its all objectives with the optimized results so today I'll, we will be just dealing with this particular case study. I will just share the screen. Is the screen visible? Hello? Hello? Yes, 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 ma'am, it's visible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can just see this is a particular case study which was published in World Journal of Engineering and Technology in the year 2016. So this is basically on development of product design strategies with specific tools. Okay, so it could be for higher education and it could be implemented in any uh, organization as well. So this was the thing which took place in University of uh, Zaragoza in Spain. So related to the entire view, the abstract speaks about what the paper is exactly into. I'm not going in depth with respect to the theoretical concept. They have the sketches and the explanations, so I'll go with that. So you'll just understand how the changes to be made with respect to our existing design process. Because in your module two, we have studied about the ancient time design process, how was it for a particular product and now how various fine tune aspect has taken place and how the existing product design process is being carried out. So based on the existing product design still here they have made some fine tune process. So this we have to deal in depth. So here just I want to tell you two points. The main the paper here speaks about two aspects. Okay, so this paper presents you two approaches in order to design a particular given project for its development process. So what are these two aspects? So one is the projects with imposed specifications and projects. Okay, and later the derived specification and the purpose which has to be used in the given particular matrix. Okay, so they consider two aspects. One is related to the design project development concept. Another one is related to the derived specifications. So each product will be having its own technical specifications, the bill of materials, everything. So how to map this derived specification with respect to the concept of the design which has been given. So both has to map properly. Then only we can say that the goal or the objective of that particular product is being achieved. So this only will be focusing here in this paper. So related to that, some introduction part has been given how one product design process looks like. So you know this product design process we have done already in your module two. So it starts up basically with a strategic definition. So how a strategic definition for a particular product comes into picture. So it is basically depending upon the need in the market. So they do a survey and take the need your requirement from that sector of customers who is in need for that particular product. So based on the need of the customer, a proper strategic definition will be made. So this will be nothing but our problem statement, basically. Okay, so once the strategic definition is being created, based on the definition or based on the problem definition or based on the strategic definition or based on the need of the customer, concept design will be made. So this concept design will be not providing you any technical specification, bill of materials, all those things. It is just a rough figure of how a product looks like. It is just a conceptual design, how the product looks like based on the needs of the customers which has been surveyed from the market. So based on it, the concept design will be made. 
so once so, so you will be having a team of design people who will do this design and there will be a team leader called as a main design leader so he will be then finalizing which concept has to be considered which concept design has to be selected because the concept design what you select should be competitive enough in today's growing technological world and it should be competitive enough to that of other products also similar one which are coming into the market so based on all these surveys the design engineer will be having all the survey related to the product what is there in the existence so based on that he should check which concept design made by his team is more competitive enough so based on that the concept design will be selected so the selected concept design then will undergo for the detailed design so here all the specification bill of materials a to z information related to the design concepts of a particular product will be assigned so once this detailed design will be made right so then it goes for verification and testing so what do you mean by verification and testing over here so the detailed design which is done has to be modeled it could be done mathematical modeling and then it could be tested for simulation and do the analysis part of it so all these things should be finalized okay so once the detailed design has been approved by the design engineer the design will be modeled it will be simulated it will be analyzed so if you see the results what you are getting is feasible enough to put forward for manufacturing so then the testing of that particular product could be done so the testing of the product could be done virtually virtual prototype could be done right or in physical prototype also could be done so this is a part of testing which they have to check whether the design approved by the design engineer is worth in going for manufacturing so once this verification and testing is been done by the simulation as well as the uh, prototyping part then only it will go for full fledged production so it won't go all the way directly to foreign mass production first a single piece of the product will be manufactured it will be tested in actual and the comments from the customers will be taken so they will check and tell whether this is whether all the needs of the customer is been satisfied in this particular product okay so even that review from the customer could be taken during the type of prototyping work also it is not necessary that they have to wait until the product is on the road okay so they can do the survey with respect to the customers during the prototyping of that particular product it could be virtual prototyping or physical prototyping of it so there if any changes are to be made so that could be modified in the detailed design so it will go back to the design team and they will do the modification and again they will come back to the prototyping stage so where testing will be done so once it has been pakka 100% it is working as per the requirement and it is satisfied the needs so then it will go for actual production so in each stages in back end the marketing part will be going in zoom once the detailed design has been approved because they have to take a proper campaign related to the product which is going to be launched in the market so that the customer will be aware exactly which is the product which is coming into the market how it functions so how the needs of them will be satisfied so all these in the back end the marketing people will be playing a vital role in their marketing strategies so these go hand in hand parallelly and later the produced mark, uh, product will be thrown into the market so when the product is in the market you know the life cycle of it the product life cycle how it comes into picture it has five phases right right from the in uh, introduction phase and it growth phase saturation and decline phase and before introduction initiation phase is also there so all the five phases we have related related to the product when it is in the market 
so we had studied only this sector as product life cycle management in our module 1 and 2 but when we came for module 5 related to virtual manufacturing of the products and product structures we studied about the life cycle of each and every item which comes into the picture right from the definition concept of the product until it's finally disposed so this we studied under the title product life cycle of each and every individual items in module 5 so each and every stage will be having its own life cycle it is not only the product which has its life cycle when it has reached the market okay so once this is done so the product will capture the market based on how good the marketing people are strong enough in their work so once it reaches initially when it goes into the market it will be in the initiation phase then the product will be neatly introduced the cost of the product will be sometimes less because they play and marketing strategy to grab the consumers so once the profit and sales slightly increases they show that they are now capturing the market at that time again the cost of the product will be with respect to the actual price then it starts growing and finally it reaches the saturation phase so in saturation phase it will be enjoying ultimate profit then the saturation uh, stage will be consistent for some period of time it depends upon how good your product is how well it can extend in the market for what period of time right so once it has enjoyed ultimately with good sales and return if the current product will not update its upgradation with respect to the needs of the customer then the sales and the profit of the product start reducing down so that is a stage when the disposal of the product comes into the picture okay and again once the product is disposed if the company should be growing in growing technology they should be having one or the other product in their hand so it could be the upgradation of the existing product as per the needs of the customers or it could be a new product what they are throwing into the market so this cycle goes on and on and on until and unless the company want to withstand well in the growing world so this is about the general product design process how it works in actual so now in this paper for this existing product design process so they have implemented some strategies in each and every stages so i just want you to understand how these strategic definitions are split up which tools are been used how the design concepts are split up which tools are used for design right so this implementation of the strategies in each and every stage of the design process you should understand clearly okay so this basically starts up with a strategic definition i told the strategic definition is nothing but the problem definition of our product so this problem definition or strategic definition could be split uh, up into three categories so one is the objectives action and the results so based on the problem definition the objectives will be set it out so if you have a problem definition so in order to achieve that problem definition successfully in order to solve that problem you should list out some objectives so every problem definition it's not necessary that it will be having a single objective it can be having one two yeah multiple based on how big your project definition is or the problem definition is so based on the complexity of your problem definition you will list out the objectives so all these objectives put together will help you to achieve the problem definition and complete your project successfully and to get the product in your hand as per the requirement of the customers so these will be the objectives so in this way you have to list out the objectives 
so you will exactly define the problem what you have to work out you will identify the opportunities which are available for improvement you also identify the users who are the users for the particular product and also you will find out to investigate legislation and the industrial property related to that product if you have any so all these things have to be checked out in the objective section so once the objectives are listed out you should now establish an action profile how you start working what is your actions taken to achieve your objectives successfully okay so you will to define the problem what you have to do you have to take some action what is it you have to define and manage the market segments so you need to survey the entire market segment by segment you should get the review from the customers and then only based on the review of the customers the problem definition could be done right so this is the action which has to be done in order to achieve the first objective of your problem next you have to identify the opportunities for improvement of that product if it is an existing product where modification has to be done so for that what is action taken it has to be analyzed with respect to the competitive products which are there in the market already okay and you should also establish your profile and needs related to the consumers so these are the two actions what you have to do similarly for the other objectives similarly there are specific actions which the people of the company has to perform so they do analyze different sources of information available and they propose a team who will work on it right and also they put forward some rules norms and regulations which the people have to follow and abide for the rules until and unless the product is completed successfully so these are in common actions which has to be established to see that these objectives will go in a full phase so once objectives are set once actions are carried out you should see what will be the results of the problem definition what you have defined so to identify the results you should list out the requirements of the functional characteristics which are being needed what is the work plan so you have to develop an work plan to see that because every product what you have to manufacture will come out with a project which will be having a start point and a dead point right so based on the timeline for a particular project you should develop your own gantt chart or the work plan systematically quarterly monthly yearly how you plan so for how long duration the project is if it is for one year or two year or for five years based on the time period based on the timeline the respective work plan will be done and for every work packages assigned there will be team assigned and that team will be responsible to see that that particular work package or for that product is completed okay so if the work has to be started keep in mind they should be having an particular budget amount sanctioned so it has to see that whether the budget amount finalized for this particular product is estimated and sanctioned if it is not estimated and sanctioned you cannot start without the budget release right so this is very important in the initial phase it is not like only during the static definition you will define and you will set the objectives and leave no the thing will work properly until and unless you have taken the actions as per the actions needed and you have seen that what all are required what is the requirement for this particular project to come out so you might be needing some equipments you might be needing some softwares you might be needing some expertise if all these are available or not you have to see whether the work plan is scheduled properly you have to check whether the team is needed for this particular task is available that you have to see and also whether the budget which is needed to complete the project is sanctioned or not that also you have to see if all these are done successfully then only we can go for the design concept or else it will be very difficult 
okay so various tools will be needed in order to perform this action and result part of strategic definition so these tools are been listed out here so next phase will be nothing but our design concept and even design concept will be divided into three sections okay so in the design concept so based on the problem definition you should first develop the conceptual design so how will one develop a conceptual de uh, design so even the design concept will be having few objectives what are those to generate the alternatives what are the alternative designs available already in the market is it a new thing what you are defining for the first time first uh, time or is it available already if it is available what are the alternatives and how do you sort out the feature of each design designs which are in existence or whether if you are providing any innovative feature for that particular design you have to list out and also to allocate time and resources what is the time required for this particular design of the product to be manufactured and whether the resources needed in order to manufacture this particular design is available or not even that has to be checked suppose a company identifies a design in such a way that the the time required is very long period and the available resources are not and the resources needed are not available then it will be difficult for the design for the product to be manufactured so as a designer he should be also knowing the time which has to be required to complete the product and also is the needed resources are available or not and finally you will select the generated ideas n number of ideas will be there so in that you will select which is the preferable idea so that will be done by the design engineer as a leader okay so finally once this is done you will define which are the technologies needed in order to convert this design into the product and which are the materials needed and which are the materials suitable to manufacture this particular product because it will be every material will be having its own key properties you should see that the product what you are manufacturing which functional require which functional properties are needed so based on the functional properties needed you have to select the material sometimes you should select the material which is very strong which is not corrosion which is not corroded easily which will not be affected from the external environment sometimes the product could be always below the sea in submarine cases in that the selection of the material will be dif different so all these things plays a vital role which has to be set forward in the objective section of the design concept right so once these objective concepts are been designed what you have to do is you have to take the necessary actions right so what are the actions carried out with respect to the objectives described here so you can map both the action and the objectives will be mapping with each other okay so to generate the alternative design one has to describe the concept of the design what he wants to show on the paper based on the problem definition right so these design concepts will be registered and approval of this design will be done by the design engineer if it is selected and finally they have to establish the criteria for the review and evaluation of the selected concept so once the concept is selected so it will be subjected to the criteria under review process and evaluation so in this review and the evaluation the selected concept has to be approved so if it is approved only then it will be carried forward or else plenty of concept designs will be done by the design team so they will check with the other designs which are more feasible so then to assess characteristics of users and consumers okay so once this concept design has been approved under the section of review and the evaluation process so it will be accessed with the need of the consumers or the users whether it is mapping with exactly what was the need of the consumers was even if that is been done successfully okay so it will be carried out further if any changes has to be made in order to meet the needs of the consumers then possible changes 
and corrections which are needed for that particular approved concept has to be done by the team of the design people so all these are the actions which has to be taken with care to see that it will be uh, subjected for an successful approval of the conceptual design just a second i'll share a link to this right and the last part is the results so here the concepts which are being generated so they will check the different product concepts generated and which is the best it will be selected so all these goes parallelly the objective will be mapped with the action and the action will be mapped with the results so we can see for this objective what was the action taken and what was the result what you achieved so finally based on the results list out for different conceptual design you will select which is the best more convenient and optimized way to come forward with the product okay so first you will see the product concept generated then selected alternatives for design will be compared with it and once this has been competitive enough with the alternative designs tender specifications will be called for to choose the concept which has been selected so once the tender is called for and the people will come forward to uh, take this tender uh, for completion of the project then that uh, tender will be given for that particular company who will take the project because every tender will sanction you the project and each project will be having a due date so the person to whom the tender is given he should be capable enough to manufacture that particular product within the due time and submit back from where he has taken the project so all these three goes hand in hand in design concept in the subject we just studied about what you mean by design concept how it works exactly so i explained this entirely in the previous cycle right away so now the implementation of the strategies for each phase we are listing one by one which will be having three sections under each phase so one is objective action and results so to get successfully the results as per the actions taken so we'll be needing some of the tools so these tools are been listed out for always in order to develop a right conceptual design a brainstorming session is very much needed so entire team of the design people will do the brainstorming session in order to get initiated with the conceptual design how it looks for the need of the customer right so that brings about the uh, conceptual design and finally the people will do the drawing manually and th by 3d rendering process then they start with the drawings right and uh, photo montage of the images of the design and also some uh, study models will be developed to check and then prototyping of it so it goes stage by stage to understand to see whether the need of the customer will be satisfied successfully so these are some tools which has to be followed So once the concept design has been uh, done, then it will go for detailed design process. So here, definition of design specifications will come into the uh, picture, right? So definition of design specifications. So you will generate the specifications in detail with bill of materials, everything for the conceptual design which has been selected. Then design factors will be identified, okay, design for methodology we studied right in the second uh, module design for X, which has six criteria. So all these design factors, which are essential to see for ease of manufacturing will be identified, right. So then what we'll do is it will directly go for identification of design factors and options for improvement if any design factors so you will identify there are six criteria in design factors so we'll identify those design factors which are most suitable for this particular design so we'll map with it and if anything improvement is needed so it could be fine-tuned okay so finally after this fine tuning and identifying the design factors which are available in design for x criteria we will then go for definition of critical design specification 
so until now we were just studying about the design specifications so this design specification should also undergo these number of fine tuning process and then it should end up with the critical design finalized critical design with entire specification and the full information detailed in depth information about this critical design specification has to be given so this design specification once approved will not be changed again because it will go with so many process here so there will be no chance of getting any error in the design which has been selected okay so then it will pass through the generation of three sections so desired specification one desired specification two desired specification three so all these criteria of the design specifications which are defined will be characterized into three sections so this will be surveyed again which specification yields the best c1 c2 yeah c3 so based on the selected design specification at criteria at critical level so those concepts will be selected and the detailed design uh, information will be drafted out and it will be given for testing and analysis people. So based on this selected crit critical design specification, modeling will be done, analysis will be done, simulation part will be done. Always the simulation part cannot yield you 100% result. It has to be checked by actual working so that could be done by virtual product uh, proto virtual prototyping or in actual prototy prototyping so that will help in comparison how well this critical design selected is feasible enough to be as an product so these are the changes one has to take care in implementing key strategies right from the problem definition to that of the design concepts if the problem definition and the design concepts are done successfully right so then there will be no loss in the product and even the quality of the product will be very much in good so related to that few case studies here are being shared okay so this you can just go through it i'll just explain you uh, one case study about it so this is the key changes what they have done it so this key change how it is helping in actual is been listed out in different so one approach here is projects with imposed specifications so which is a case study taken here it is a crane for people with reduced mobility so this is a case which has been taken in order to understand what are the changes they have done so here we can see the design of these type of cranes had helped them to adapt to the needs of the users. So that shows that uh, the consumers had some needs in order to make some changes in the existing crane such that it reduces the mobility part of it. So what changes did they do basically? So in actual, they were having a uh, structure that supports the efforts generated according to ISO standards, right? So the following design uh, specifications were established as per the need of the users. So what were the changes here? Individual use with maximum load capacity of 180 kg, okay? And it should be of range of 1 meter only. So this is one of the need. And they should have a comfortable assisted and safe vertical movement and third they should have horizontal movement and not necessary that it has to be assisted only for vertical movement they need the assistance and in the horizontal movement it's not needed for the assistance okay so and the next option of requirement was the driver the drive system without network connections okay so they need a drive system without a network connection and adaptation to narrow passageways they should get adapted to the narrow passageways such as doors yeah hallways and lastly the technical development feasible at a competitive cost so even the cost matters a lot so these were the requirements which was needed so in that, according to the scheme of tasks shown in figure 4, 
see uh, so this is a scheme of task which has been shown in the figure 4 what we explained so we have explained the entire process what are the changes to be made so now we are relating to a particular case study that's all so you can go through this uh, this will help you to understand how now the crane application has been implemented to the figure 4. Hello? Sir, I am in class 5 minutes. Okay. Right, so this will help in mapping the requirement with respect to the task which has been assigned. So the factors involved in the crane design were identified initially and information driven from the analysis was summarized in the matrix table. So they took all the factors which we explained here in the figure 4 and that was being placed in the matrix as shown in the table 1. So the same thing, same uh, concepts what we explained here related to the product design project with imposed specifications, same thing now they are displayed over here. So here we have the operation and function, the user and the environment and the production process as our three factors right so based on these three factors which are the specifications which were needed for the crane to be redesigned so that's been listed out here so these specifications always you should see that it comes out with respect to three sections so one is related to the process one is related to the environment and the user requirement and the third one is usually related to the operation and the functional requirement so based on these three sections the specifications were listed out so based on operation and function we listed out about what is the maximum load for the crane assisted lift how much should be what is the manual translation what is the adaptation to the narrow passages because we listed out here you can see the list of the changes which were being needed for the crane design so same things now are being described with respect to the specification details and similarly user requirement it should be comfortable with the movements and the range of the crane should be only one meter and adaptations to the narrow passage the crane should adapt for the narrow passages also so this were the need of the consumers user requirement so even that has been added now in the specification and apart from that the specification for the process which has to be carried out also should be added so it should be an competitive cost for that what you have to take care of and again a feasible technical development okay so what is the feasible technical part of the development to get this uh, type of design successfully so this will listed out and similarly these specifications should be always mapped with the factors so what are the factors one with operation and function user and environment and production process how it is done so all these are shown here so what are the operations required so you should be having the general structure how it looks which are the rolling elements needed which batteries and transformers are in need right so what is the mechanical strength of the material you are using uh, what are the applied materials you are using for any extra functional requirements which are the energy sources which is in needed and some concepts of your kinematics of device in because you need to constrain some degree of freedom and all right so all these will come under our operation principles and the device composition which are in need so based on that the user requirement will be satisfied so once this has been satisfied they will go for production process so in production process they should identify which materials are available as per the requirement of the functional properties so which is a feasible material you will first select it could be alloys it could be any type of sheets or it could be any commercially avail available processed materials or it could be electric uh, components or it could be the mechanical properties what you have to fine tune for the selected material with respect to quantities which amount of material is needed for what amount of quantity so all these things has to be done in our materials and supplies and even a vendor management will play a vital role in selecting the required materials because the materials what you select should map with the design and finally it should end up with a good product as per the need of the customer
so once the material is also been selected finally the process you will be selecting which process do you select to use this material and manufacture the product right so that processing part will be taken care and you know you cannot directly manufacture a crane into a single product you have to de first manufacture the components you have to assemble it and finally get the required product so which are the operations needed which machines you are using in order to manufacture part by part how you are going to assemble so all these will be taken care in the process section of the production so these are the three factors which plays a vital role for designing a crane as per the requirement so i have explained you the various strategies which are implemented in each phase of the design how it will help in improving the quality as well as the uh, this one uh, competitive cost with respect to uh, good specifications and as per the requirement of the customers and we related that to one of the case study for designing a crane with reduced mobility similarly other case studies are been given you can go through it so the second one is airbrush for high precision works all are small small case studies you can just go through it and one more we have for uh, urban fitness machines organizing bathroom furniture so there are various case studies you can just go through it so this is how the new design strategies has to be implemented in order to get a good qualitative product with enhanced life cycle for that particular product with good sales and return so today i am just ending up over here and uh, you please uh, for others who were not there in the class i can see only three to four students there were four now there are only three students Uh, Bet Prakash, you are here. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that day you had sent me the seminar project. Uh, this one uh, report, right? Recording. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, Namneet. Namneet sended me separately with the PPT recording since he is in Nepal, and yourself yes. portal you shared me. What about Shaurya? means ma'am that uh, recording should be sent by all of the student no 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 it was taken uh, together right you two was uh, in a single day and shaurya's was on the other day with namnit namnit did not turn up yeah yeah oh yeah ma'am shaurya was with uh, other some other yeah yeah day. yeah you just consult with him and ask him to call me back Okay, ma'am. Okay. Ah, uh, it means uh, you need that recording also. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, ma'am. I will inform him. Just ask him to send me at the earliest. I have, I think, I have saved and downloaded somewhere. He mailed me on the same day. I'm not able to get again. Okay, ma'am. I will ask him. Ask him and just inform the students who haven't submitted the assignments until now. There are few students who have not submitted the last assignment. to ask them to submit at the earliest i have to finalize your uh, final ia marks okay ma'am okay okay ma'am yeah then so go through all the materials given study well okay so plenty of case studies are also been explained question papers are also revised you have the study material for each and every module study yes, as per the syllabus and prepare well for your examinations okay sure ma'am yeah fine then take care bye bye okay